Well, the new update from Autel 2.5.11 includes a bunch of goodies, a bunch of fixes, and the option to do a manual IMU calibration. But that's easier said than done. It's a little bit confusing, and so in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do a manual IMU calibration on your Autel Evo 2. Hey, what's going on? It's Hobart. Welcome back to my channel. I really appreciate you joining me. So Autel put out a new update for the Evo 2 Series 2.5.11, and they've had a lot of bug fixes in there, a couple new features in there, one of them being the option to do a manual IMU calibration. Now, up until this point, the Evo 2 did its own IMU calibration each time you powered up. At least that's what Autel told me on several different occasions. Now, I did do a video a couple of months ago because of that answer telling you, no, you don't need to do an IMU calibration. For those of us who came from DJI, we had the option to do the manual IMU calibration. It was the whole thing about putting your battery in the fridge because then it would take longer for it to warm up to the point where you could fly the drone. One of the reasons I came to Autel. But the Evo 2 was doing it all on its own. Well, on this last update, they've given us the option to do it manually, and it's a little bit confusing. Now, I have spoken to a few of the guys over at uh, Autel, and they are aware of this, and they're going to try to make it a little bit easier for us to understand in a future, most likely, app update. Uh, maybe a software update. But for now, since most of you are probably getting stuck on step three... I wanted to show you exactly the different steps that you go through and then talk about some of the issues that I was having afterwards. So let's go through and do a Evo 2 IMU calibration right now. So this is how you do it. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your Autel Evo 2 Explorer app. So I'm going to go to my Explorer app in here. Where did I put you? Right there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my... remote to my phone by using the cable if I could get it in you know one thing I don't like is this flap that's here on the remote it's really hard to try to get the cable in but I understand that it's purpose what it is alright so once we're connected we're gonna go into the settings section okay of the camera and we're gonna go to settings in the upper right hand corner okay uh, and in there you're gonna see IMU calibrate so we're gonna hit IMU calibrate and you're gonna see a image it looks like the drone is facing us so I'm gonna go ahead and put it facing, well, I'll have it facing you, okay? So just like it is in the picture. So when you hit start calibration, you're gonna wanna watch the picture. It's gonna tell you that it's calibrating, and then when it's done, it's gonna ask you to move it to a different position. Now, step three is where everybody seems to get caught up on this. And so I'm gonna show you exactly what they mean by that so you can have a successful IMU calibration. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna hit starting calibration. All right, so it's starting the calibration. Now, during calibration, you're going to notice that your gimbal does go limp. That is on purpose. It's supposed to come back when it's done, and that's something that I've had an issue with that I'll talk to you about later on. So as it's doing its thing, it says, all right, it's calibrated. Now it wants me to flip it upside down. So you're going to flip it upside down. It's going to tell you that your latitude is abnormal, et cetera, et cetera, but it's okay. You have it upside down while it says calibrating. Okay, so now it's done calibrating step number two. This is where everybody seems to get stuck because when you look at the picture, it almost looks like you're looking at the drone from the top and they just want you to kind of turn it around in circles, kind of like you would do with a compass calibration. But that's not what they want you to do and this is what they're going to make more clear. At this point in time, you're going to need to actually take the drone and put it up on its side. And you want to keep it as straight up and down as possible. You do not want to have it leaning to one way or another. It needs to be straight up and down as possible. So, I'm going to put it on its side and you want to do it quickly because it starts calibrating right when you get it to the right way. It's going to start calibrating and you don't want to be wobbling around while it's doing its calibrating. So right now it's telling me that it wants me to do it like this. There it is. So I've actually set it up on its side and you're going to have to hold it while it's calibrating. Step number three. Okay, once it's, once it's done calibrating step number three, you're going to take it and turn it 180 degrees this way up on its side. Hold it again while it says calibrating. This is step number four of the process. All right, so we've passed that part. Now, this is one of the reasons why they disable the gimbal is because step number five, you're actually going to put it on its face, straight up and down. Okay, straight up and down on its face. While it says calibrating, 
And then when it's finished, with that step, the final step is to put it on its back or on its butt. Again, you want to have it as straight up and down as possible while it does the last step. Once you're done, it will say calibration success. You can go ahead and put it back down again, and you're good to go. So that is how you complete a IMU calibration manually with the new update in the Autel Evo 2 and Evo 2 Pro. Now, the issues that I was having. So I did have some issues when I was done with the update 2.5.11, did the IMU calibration, did a gimbal calibration. I did not do the compass because I was inside and I had some issues. I actually had some issues with the gimbal being limp even after I was done with the IMU calibration and after I was done with the gimbal calibration. It just stayed limp. So that was a concern, number one. I also uh, turned the engines on with the props off, obviously, in the house, and I had a freakout moment where it, it just, engines went crazy, the drone, uh, the gimbal went left and right, and I actually had to pull the battery in order for it to uh, go back to normal again. Now, what I did notice is, is if you do have issues like that, if you do a quick power cycle, it goes away, and you should be good to go. Now, I did also have some warnings that I was getting, which was gimbal not ready to fly, gimbal not ready to fly, over and over and over again. Now, I did just speak to Evan over at uh, Autel, and he sent me an email that I wanted to share with you. Uh, the email is basically telling us what order that we need to do these updates or these calibrations in uh, to try to fix this issue. Now, they are working on where's the root of the problem, why is this happening. There are a few people that are reporting it, maybe not everybody, so it might not have to be this way forever. But uh, Evan says that when you do these calibrations, after you do your software update, you're going to want to do gimbal first, then you're going to want to do compass calibration, and then finally, last, you want to do your IMU calibration. I myself did IMU first, did gimbal second, and I really didn't even do a compass calibration because I was inside. I eventually did go outside and did a compass calibration, and it seemed like it cleared things up. But I was still having some issues here and there. So the word just a few minutes ago from Evan over at Autel is that as of now, we feel like this order will fix your issues while we work on a permanent fix. So that is doing your gimbal first, your compass calibration second, and your IMU calibration last, okay? Again, another tip. When you're doing your IMU, make sure you have a nice hard surface to put it on. If you don't, make sure you're in a very steady mood so you can hold this thing in the different positions very steady. They did build some tolerance into these, you know, keeping it steady so you don't have to be perfect, but you don't want to just be kind of sitting there holding it haphazardly or loosely. You want to keep that thing nice and straight, and that's going to be your secret, all right? So uh, that's basically it. Now you know how to do a manual IMU calibration. You have the order in what you need to do these in after you do the update. So if you haven't done the 2.511 update yet, when you get done with that, make sure you do your gimbal, your compass, and then your IMU calibration and do it exactly like that, and you should be good to go. Um, but that's basically it. So good luck with it. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down in the comments. I would be happy to answer them. I've gone through about a week of trying to figure this out and several calls with Autel. Um, and I think they are aware of it and they're working on it as well. Like I said, it's not for everybody. Not everybody's experiencing this, but some of us are. And uh, I haven't had any issues with this so far up until this point, but it looks like things are, are fixed now that I've gone and done these in the order that Evan said to do them in and also getting it outside and letting the GPS get to it and letting the compass calibrate also fix some of the issues. So I was only doing two out of the three figuring I didn't need to do the compass until I was outside and ready to fly but I was incorrect on that. So as long as you do them in those orders you should be good to go if you have the issues. If not Enjoy your flight, enjoy the new update and all the other bells and whistles and fun things that they gave us in this update. And uh, if you like what I'm doing here, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. Like I said, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below and I'll answer them. And don't forget to hit the bell so next time I put out a video, you'll be notified so you'll be able to see what I put out next, all right? Well, thanks again. My name is Hobart. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. See ya.